Good evening. The Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, January 28th, 2021 is now called to order. The time is 7.04 p.m. The Marion Township meetings are being done via telepresence through Zoom because of COVID-19 and Governor Wolf's stay-at-home orders and the emergency declaration. Um, an emergency declaration was made by Marion Township back in March of 2020 with the provision to extend for a period of time lasting until further action by the board. The uh, ex de uh, emergency declaration was extended by Governor Wolf back in November on the 24th for a period of 90 days. So for the first order of business, we typically do the Pledge of Allegiance. However, because of the nature of the telepresence, we are omitting those for the time being. So that we'll move into the, the main items for the meeting. First thing is the approval of the minutes for November 19th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Jim or Irene, do I have a second? Second. Second. Jim got it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the minutes for December 26th, 2020 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes for the December 30th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes for the January 4th, 2021 reorganization meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes for the January 3rd, 2021 workshop meeting. January 23rd. 23rd, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. January 23rd, 2021 workshop meeting. All motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to approve the payment of bills for January 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. We have two citizens uh, on the meeting presently. Uh, Kelly or Dan, do you have any public comments? I do, Peter. I'd, I'd like to know where the township stands on property maintenance. We have the ordinance in effect, and we had Kraft do some drive arounds on things. And a number of people have received notices of violation, and Kraft has been working on remediation for certain properties that are uh, larger offenders than others. Uh, there may be a particular property that you're, you're thinking of that I think has possibly spawned that, that inquiry. And Kraft yeah. has been in contact with that person and is actually beginning to, uh, to move through the next <laughs> steps of enforcement. They had been making positive progress over a, a number of months, and that's really the goal, not so much to beat people up on things, but to, to identify a problem and work towards a resolution. And because of the, the sort of backslide that's happened within the past couple of weeks to a month, uh, they will be moving forward with uh, further enforcement actions. Now, is it Craft Code that enforces this, or is it the township? It, it is Craft Code. We, we, def we, we define what it is, and they, they do the enforcement of it. Right. Uh, I mean, they're, they're the craft is the agent for the township. It's really the township that's taking the enforcement action. 
Yeah. But Kraft is Kraft is the appointed code enforcement officer. Yeah, and that's that's probably I, I appreciate that, Andy. It's probably a better way of explaining that. That while at the end of the day, we are still ultimately responsible for that because we we set the ordinance. It's much like any any number of other things where we're having somebody else actively enforce it and pardon the term police it. Right. Okay. I'm satisfied with that answer. I'm sorry, say that again. I'm satisfied with that answer. Well, thank you. Okay. Kelly, do you have any comments? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sue, did we have any email or phone call comments? There were no emails, no phone calls. Okay. Phenomenal. Well, at this time, we will move into the main items for the meeting. First item on the agenda is the uh, emergency declaration that I covered at the start of the meeting. Uh, that was, as mentioned, renewed on November 24th by Governor Wolf for another 90 days. So we'll have to watch that closely to make sure that that does get renewed again, which uh, is going to be critical as this is what allows us to do these meetings to be the telepresence mechanism. Um, Andy, have you heard any whispers or rumblings about that being extended for, for further time? I haven't heard any. Okay. We'll have to keep, uh, keep an eye out for it because if we have to, to switch back to being in the township building, the social distance requirements would really be heavy, heavily limited to, to how many people we could have in that building. We'd have essentially three people in the audience um, and everybody else would unfortunately be, be turned away because we wouldn't be able to keep the, the kind of distance in the, in the physical space. Um, so I'll keep an eye out. I know Irene keeps an eye out. Sue, I know you keep an eye out for that sort of thing. And Andy, that's that's kind of what one of the things you do is you keep an eye out for that sort of stuff. So we'll we'll make sure that we have our, our ducks in a row. I would imagine an Absolutely. extent would come in. I, I think so too, personally, but I, I don't like to assume. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on the agenda is there were uh, a couple of minor errors in the minutes that uh, Sue caught, and uh, we made a motion to correct them at the workshop meeting. Uh, the first was a error in the, the October 24th, 2020 minutes that reflected Irene as being absent. Irene was actually in attendance. The next was at the November 14th, 2020 workshop meeting. Uh, there was a, a copy and paste related error where the roll call from a, a prior meeting got included in the, the new one that had been listed as Peter Wallace, Franklin, and Peter McCarthy, when it should have been uh, Peter McCarthy, Irene Selesky, and Jim Brooks. So those corrections have been approved and made, and should be nothing more on that. <clears throat> Next is to adopt the 2021 fee schedules. A motion was made at the workshop to adopt resolution 2021-3 for building, zoning, and SEO permits for both residential and commercial. It's worth noting that many of the, the rates did not change and any of the ones that did only changed slightly. So it was a, a pretty good year considering, or, or will be a pretty good year 2021 uh, because the, the rates did not hike. Um, next is the Western Berks Planning Commission. Uh, a hearing was held on Thursday, January 21st, 2021 at the Robazonia Borough Hall, which uh, ultimately added Marion Township into the joint zoning ordinance along with some other changes. Um, Andy, is there anything that you'd like to, to add on top of that? Well, I'd like to say thanks to the, to the supervisors and to Sue for all of your hard work and and getting that together and bringing it to completion. The planning commission members uh, put a lot of time into it. McCarthy, um, uh, especially Craig, put a ton of time into that. So it was good to see it come, come all together at the end. And then you never know how it's going to go when you have 20 or whatever people in a room, uh, many of whom have, you know, some pretty strong opinions about various things. So, um, all that being said, I think things went pretty well. And um, in fact, nobody had any comments, which uh, made everything run pretty smoothly. Absolutely. So, so it, it's done. And then um, what we'll have to do now is, and I don't know if you have this yet, Sue, but you'll have to have the entire joint zoning ordinance along with the comments, or, yeah, the, the amendments that were just made. Um, 
and then we'll have to have that, you know, ready and available and probably scanned and made part of the website and things like mm. that. So that's coming. Um, I just got all of the fully signed and uh, Lisa Heilman at Rob Azonia, uh, needed to get her signature and to have her certification put on a bunch of them. So she just delivered those this week to my office. And now I have to get them out to everybody. So, okay. As a curiosity, okay. is is there a digital copy of that that pre-exists or? There's rumors of that. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody has it. Somebody has it. I'd like to get my hands on it. And because I, I've heard, I've heard numerous people say that they'd like to incorporate the amendments actually into the ordinance. So they're not kind of just sitting attached to the back and it has, it won't be that big of a job. It hasn't been amended that much. It, mm. This might have been what we did four amendments and there might be a total of six or seven since the inception of this ordinance in 2004. Okay. But, I mean, but anyway, at yeah. the least, at least you should have the, the large ordinance with the maps and then the, have all the amendments attached to it. Absolutely. We can get that put on that bookshelf that we were talking about, Sue, with uh, mm -hmm, all, exactly. the, all, the, all the reference material. Yeah. But yeah. If, if you happen to come across a digital copy, Andy, I think everybody on the, the call would be interested in looking at it or having a copy of it in one capacity or another. Yes. That will be uh, one of my goals for next week. Okay. Fantastic. Other than that, I, I would just like to tackle on that. This is a, a, a good thing. It's going to open up a, a lot of positive opportunity and change for the township. It corrects a lot of longstanding uh, things that are, are technically out of, uh, I guess, out of compliance by by zoning and is has been something that really should have been done many, many, many years ago. So it's good that that's done and we can we can start leveraging that and moving forward and improving. Next is the culvert on Sheridan Road. This is near Gerald Hoover's farm at 540 Sheridan Road. The hole is getting bigger. Uh, we made a motion at the December workshop meeting to reduce traffic in the problem area of Sheridan Road to one lane uh, per McCarthy Engineering's suggestion. Um, I will need to be working with the road crew to make sure that we have all of that properly in place. But uh, we also made a motion uh, at the workshop to have McCarthy Engineering design the replacement of this culvert. Uh, with the intent being that uh, one of the things that we can do this year with the road crew, seeing as we, we allocated a sufficient amount of money for additional road work, would be to fix and repair that culvert. Um, McCarthy Engineering sent a letter over about the repair options. Um, I have not gotten a chance to read through it in earnest yet. Um, Jim or Irene, I'm not sure if you had gotten a chance to look over it extensively. I didn't uh, see anything, but I didn't look at my email today. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, we're not going to take any action on it right right at this meeting, so we'll have time to, to review it and digest it. Um, one of the things that I do recall in that is that uh, the suggestion was made around doing precast stuff rather than trying to do anything else uh, because it's the kind of the best balance of time and money and requires, generally speaking, the, 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 the lowest amount of specialized skill to do the installation. Um, which I think I think is a fair assessment. It's it's not a disparagement for anybody in any sh way, shape, or form, but it's the easiest of the installs. It's a little little bit more money by part to have it precast and delivered, but it, it saves you other other headaches and and some other funds at other portions of the project. So we'll look that over, but I think that might be a good one for the spring if we can. Uh, we can rally the road crew and we have uh, sufficient manpower and the expertise to do it uh, because it would be su substantially cheaper than bidding that out or going through the uh, dirt and low volume gravel road, uh, even though that we'd be chasing grant money on that. Um, you have to design the project to a much, much different standard when you do that. Okay. Any questions, Jim or Irene, on that one? No, I just uh, like to read through the email and uh, take a look at what uh, Jim has recommended. Yeah, actually, it was just flipping through there. There's a, a couple of options. Um, 
the first one is two 48 inch concrete pipes. Another one is two 60 inch concrete pipes or another is a 12 foot by four foot box culvert. Um, each of them kind of have their, their own pros and cons, uh, but the, the box culvert, the 12 by four is the, the one that they recommend. So we'll, we'll read into it. We'll discuss at the next workshop meeting and the next board of supervisors meeting, but I think that would be one that we should be able to tackle ourselves and uh, not only be able to do, but do well. Okay, next up is the Stouchburg Road, Wintersville Road intersection. There are uh, boulders on that particular property that are technically in the road right of way. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop to have McCarthy Engineering uh, design an exhibit of how far back these boulders should be moved by the homeowner to be outside of the right of way. Um, in, a, in an effort to save money, they actually went out and marked, rather than produce any sort of map or anything like that, they just simply went out and measured and marked where the, the right of the way ends. That way, the homeowner now knows where the roadway technically is or isn't, and how far over the line the boulders are. So I, I say we give it a couple of days because I only saw the email about that within the past one to two. And if, if there hasn't been a phone call already, I'm sure there probably will be, or we can try reaching out to the homeowner and, and making a nice gentle nudge for, hey, we hope the signs that we installed have really cut down on the truck traffic and that the concerns that you had about, you know, life and limb for somebody driving into your home. You don't have to get rid of your boulders, but we, we ask you very, very strongly that you move them beyond this line so that you're not encroaching on the roadway and causing a safety concern for other people. But uh, thank you to uh, Jim for actually going out there and physically marking it. That probably makes things a lot easier. Yeah, I think that's uh, honestly the easiest. It's hard to tell sometimes with the map, especially that particular roadway because of the shape of it and the fact that there has been years of, of asphalt spillage and you can't really tell yeah. where it's supposed to end. It's it's It takes the guesswork out of it. We had a, a trained professional go out and tell you exactly where it needs to go or not go. Okay, any other questions, comments, or concerns from the board? Okay, fantastic. Uh, next is the road project 2021. Um, I still need to finalize the measurements. I, speaking honestly, have not had a lot of good opportunities during daylight hours to go out and, and run a, a measuring wheel. I hope to find some time this weekend to do that. Um, Jim or Irene, if you're interested in going out too, might be a good opportunity to drive around, mm -hmm. see some of the roads and I can bring you up on up to speed on some of the, the historic problems and areas that we need to be attentive to. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll still try to get that done. It's a very, very, very small bit that we have to do, that we have to measure, but it's literally the last thing that we need to do before we can put that bid packet out. I'll be available Saturday. Okay, I will try to make myself available Saturday. Um, the one, I may have a, a slight schedule conflict in the afternoon, but I'll, I'll give you a call and, and talk to you about timing off of the meeting. Okay, next up is the noise ordinance. Actually, I'm gonna, I, I skipped one, I apologize. Um, we'll do the noise ordinance first because I already started that one and then I'll jump back a step. Irene, this is a, a, an initiative that you brought up yeah. and uh, we had made a motion at the workshop meeting to send over a draft of the ordinance to Andy for his review. Yeah. Uh, have you received that yet, Andy? I, I do, I have that, yes. Okay. Um, Irene, before we really go into it, would you, would you like to maybe say a few things about this with Andy present? Um, yeah, Andy, I cheated. <laughs> I used, okay. I think Oli had, <laughs> I, I think Oli had uh, ordinance uh, online that I used most of the material from there. Um, uh, uh, the one section about penalties, that's the only one I was really kind of iffy about. But actually, I, I had done this before I even, I even considered um, running for office. So please feel free to criticize and, and revamp. I hope the, the brunt of it is there. I know during the workshop, uh, Peter, you had some concerns about um, the one paragraph that def defined the decibels. And like for us, it's easy to just kind of say, well, you know, 60 decibels doesn't sound a lot. But 60 decibels is a conversation like we're having now, if you could hear me well enough. So it, it's the sound that you hear from the adjacent property. So if I'm 
on standing on my property, I shouldn't be able to hear people as well as I could hear you when we're having a little bit of a conversation. So, and I think there's the other paragraph defines that um, 10 decibels over that, which is about the sound level that a vacuum makes, um, is what is uh, permissible during uh, daylight hours, and five decibels is what is permissible uh, during, uh, I believe, um, later in the day. I, I Forgive me, I'm driving. I'm just trying to remember everything that, that's in that ordinance. But um, for the most part, this is something that another neighbor had approached me about, and I have no idea. I've never met this lady before in my life. It was in regards to uh, fireworks that were going off quite a bit on a routine basis. I think it was over in Shady Cabins, but um, yeah. yeah, so Andy, please take a look, please advise, revamp, um, whatever you think is necessary. But uh, again, it's one of those things, I know it's iffy as far as enforcement, but at least if there's something there, if there's a complaint, we have a little bit of peace that we could say, hey, no, there is a noise ordinance and we, we're gonna politely ask you to comply. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I just drafted one for Richland, Borough, and Lebanon County. Um, <clears throat> I've done one for Fleetwood. There actually is a noise provision in the joint zoning ordinance, but it's not very um, specific. I mean, there are test levels that are in, in there, um, which I believe are different than what are in here. Which is which is fine. I mean, uh, municipalities can have their own noise ordinance because the fact is, in the joint zoning ordinance, there are not any criminal penalties associated with it. This one has the one that Irene has has uh, the ability. You have the ability to cite people and find people uh, from a criminal nature, so it could be enforced by the police and. Um, or the codes, or the codes officers. But a lot of times, when noises happen, the codes officers are not, quote unquote, on duty. So um, the trick, really, and I think Irene hit the nail on the head, is enforcement. So how do you, how do you measure decibel levels? There needs to be a decibel level reader. Uh, I don't know if Copenhagen Township has one. I know that. South Heidelberg Police Department does not, and they cover three other municipalities, and it's a 14-member police department. They don't have one. Um, there, there are um, there are apps for, for people's phones <laughs> that could be used for, for decibel level readings. I just don't know how sustainable that is in court. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in, in seeing the one that you drafted and comparing the two side by side. Because uh, aside from just the, the overall decibel levels, because like I said, my, my recollection on that was conversations usually 60, things like vacuum cleaners are 70 or 75, and then it just it gets relatively louder and mm -hmm. as you go up. Um, one of the things that immediately jumps out as a concern for me is I think the way the one that you wrote, Irene, is worded, like the things like construction yeah. is... I mean, technically, all all construction is going to be permitted in some capacity, but you could have somebody building a, a birdhouse during the day using a, a saw. Technically, would probably right. be well above the noise ordinance. Or, like for example, I, I have chickens. Right. There are certain times of the day but that they they crow, and that uh, right. we want to make sure we don't have but unintended consequences right. on this. No, 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 no. But there's but there's more to it. So if it's continuous, if it's for an extensive amount of time. I think everyone understands people build things, people will use saws, um, but if it's, and people understand that there's a construction aspect and, and there's noises, but let's say your chickens, let's say you had an extremely loud chickens and all of a sudden it's continuous and it's going on for 40, you know, 50 minutes over an hour every day, then it becomes more of a nuisance and more of an issue that should be controlled. So, you know, Again, like I said, I kind of cheated. I borrowed a lot of the material from an, an, another ordinance. There's there's very good definition as to what constitutes that particular violation, and it, it, it's a it's a it's a long duration of time. You know, I think to the average person, the average person will say, "Hey, yeah, you know, that is annoying. That is something that is not wanted." But please, you know, take a look at Andy. 
please put in suggestions, recommendations, whatever you guys think. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I poured over it a couple of times. I thought, hey, this is good, but again, not, not really having other material in front of me. Um, there is a specific uh, section there on animals, Peter. I don't know if you had read yeah, that I, in any detail. So. Yeah, I have that, and there's it's uh, do, 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 owning, possessing, or, or harboring or controlling any animal or bird which howls, barks, meows, squawks, or makes other sound continuously <laughs> and or incessantly for a period of 10 minutes or makes such noise intermittently for one half hour or more, regardless of whether the animal or bird is situated in or on private property. Provided that at the time the animal or bird is making such noise, no person is trespassing or threatening to trespass upon private property in or upon which the animal or bird is situated for any other legitimate cause which teased or provoked the animal. Um, like I said, my, my only concern is I know there are there are certain times of the day where the chickens will get going. Or like I said, going back to the, the saw <laughs> example, that you may have somebody that is yeah. building a birdhouse or building a table or something like that where you're going to potentially have longer than 10-minute than periods of loud noises and that's i think that's just unfortunately that's a fact of life i agree with you though that yeah. there are there are certain things yeah. in here about like not shooting off guns or fire arcs or things like that after after nightfall um uh because i i was i was ground zero for the the fireworks that you were referring to that that other neighbor <laughs> complained about and at that time yeah. my, my son i think was like six months old so for about two weeks solid there every every day that i'd get him down to bed they would start setting yeah. fireworks off and wake him back up again. So I, I understand the frustration that you and the other people across the creek were having. I completely understand it. Yeah. But I also want to make sure that when we put something in here that we don't put something in that is going to have uh, overreaching. Negative consequences. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Un yeah. unintended <laughs> negative consequences. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. want to have us do no, something absolutely. with the best intentions and end up having this would be like a, a huge fiasco we're like wow ev everybody's technically making too much noise all the time um no so. i'm sure you know, extend out that time a half hour i mean not being that familiar with animals but i could mm. tell you there are um there are some dogs in our particular area that are constantly out barking 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 no matter what we do and it'll be 10 minutes they're quiet for two 10 minutes quiet for two so um whatever you think a, a time frame please feel free to insert it. And if it would work out better, then that would be wonderful. Okay. One of the things that might be worth looking into, I think there are laws about like specifically leaving your dog out, especially certain times of year with it being cold. I, I think mm -hmm. there's actually, there's something that recently hit the, the books in Pennsylvania around that being considered like animal cruelty. If you're leaving your dog out like that long periods of time, that might be worth looking into because that might be, you have the symptom of the noise, but that might be inherently illegal or at least highly frowned upon through other pre-existing laws or ordinances. Are you, are you talking about uh, low a certain temperature? Well, yeah, there was, I forget what it was called. And I remember reading it at the time that there was, um, there was an animal cruelty law passed because somebody left a dog out like tethered in the winter. And it like it froze to death or something along that lines and somebody yeah it was it was a really tragic story but the immediate aftermath of that is they passed updated uh there was an update like animal cruelty law where you're not supposed to leave an animal they didn't specify clearly dog but you're not supposed to leave an animal outside uh like tethered unattended for more than x amount of time and you shouldn't do it if it's below a certain temperature i'll have to see if i can find it but that was probably about a year and a half ago if my memory serves me right Yeah. Well, I guess what I can do is um, I don't want to overload you with information. I can provide you with Richland, which is um, actually it's not even passed yet, but it's been advertised to be passed next month. That's really new. Um, and then in, in developing that one, I looked at a couple other municipalities. So Irene, I did the same thing. I cheat too. Um, <laughs> I, I probably have three other ordinances so um and one of them i didn't like but i'll send you a couple and then you can take a take a look at them and i mean this isn't something you want to rush through anyway you kind of want to you know if you're going to put something in place you want it to be you want it to stand the test of time you want it to be something that's uh enforceable and something that you can it can be supported 
if it has to be used in court. And also, I would recommend giving it to the police Given. department to take a look at too, to get their thoughts. Maybe they do have a decibel level reader, I don't know. Um, in, in Irene's ordinance though, some, some of these things are, are applicable whether or not they would go over the decibel level uh, measure. Mm -hmm. Like the barking dogs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's uh, over the level or not. Okay. Like I said, I, I like I like the concept. I think we need to 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 do some comparing on other things and, and dial it in. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your input. Thank you very okay. much. Also, Andy, I quick looked. Uh, it's Libre's law. Libre's the, law. Yeah, that was uh, 2017. So it's a little little further back than I thought. Time flies when you're having fun, I suppose. But uh, that was that was the one. Okay. Okay. Next up is the website. Uh, we are still submitting content over to Civic CMS. The final step is training, which has unfortunately been a kind of a function of getting everybody's schedules lined up to be able to do the final training course so that, that we have a bit of an administrative background on how to interact with the site. Um, still trying to do that as soon as possible. Uh, if, at, at this point, if I have to take a day off at some point to do so, I will, I will do it. But uh, that's really the last hurdle that we have to get past before the website goes live and we can we can start having it out and in general circulation and use for the public. Uh, Jim, Sue, or Irene, do you have any follow-up questions on that? No, thank you. Okay. Okay. The next is the elected auditor resignation. Uh, Bob Nelson has resigned uh, from his position as an elected auditor on January 5th. Um, by second class township code, we have 45 days to accept his resignation and then another 30 days to fill the vacancy. Um, a motion would be needed to accept, to accept his resignation uh, with regret, of course, and uh, we would need another motion to appoint the new person when we found a suitable party. Um, 45 days from January 5th would be February 19th. I'm trying to remember, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Is that before or after the next workshop meeting, Sue? Um, I think it might be the day before. Day before. Okay. Oh, wait. So close. What was his date? Uh, uh, the January 5th. Our workshop meeting is February 20th, Saturday the 20th. The 20th. So close. So close. Okay. Well, I think we actually... Uh, so, uh, Irene, can you hang up the phone call now that you're in the meeting? Thank you. Um, I, I have think the 45th day, Peter. I have the 45th day being on the 20th. Yeah. Okay, because I did. Uh, I, did I didn't actually count. I did January 5th plus 45 days. Like, I for, for clarity, yeah, I, I cheated and I just used Excel and did date plus 45. Oh, okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, the, the count doesn't start till the 6th. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah, that would be the, the day of the workshop then. So that works out phenomenally. Thank you for that clarification, Andy. Um, in that case, I would say just for the sake of uh, convenience, let's make that at the next workshop meeting. We do have a couple of people who have expressed interest. Unfortunately, one of the parties is prevented unless, Andy, you want to weigh in otherwise. Um, if you're a member of the road crew, you can't be an elected auditor. That's as I understand that. Yeah, yep. as I say, that based on what we we circulated amongst the the group here of what second class township code, that was my take on it as well. Um, so unfortunately, uh, Don Height, who expressed an interest uh, with him being on the road crew, he would have to choose either a road crew or, or elected auditor. Um, there was a, another person who was interested. It's uh, Sherry Sadison. Uh, she has offered to do that, but uh, we don't necessarily have to make that decision tonight because we do have uh, the additional. Uh, just shy of a month to see if she's truly interested or if there's somebody else who would have a, a stronger interest. So, uh, Sue, I guess the, the takeaway would be make sure that that stays on the agenda and then we have Sherry clearly noted as the, the interested party unless somebody else steps forward. Yeah. And now and then. She, she did, she was elected auditor before when they actually, you know, 
did they did, did the, the auditing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then her, her, I believe her term expired and she just didn't rerun. Um, but when I texted her today, she sounded like she was interested. Okay, good. She asked good. what 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 the auditors do now, and I explain it's basically a you know 15, 20 minute meeting uh, to um, set the pay rates for the supervisors. Um, for the various positions, and that's about it. So, okay. but okay. I can reach out to her again in a in a week or so, and just kind of clarify it. Give yeah, her time to think about it. I was going to say, make sure she doesn't <laughs> change her mind. But yes, yeah. that, that would be ideal. But if we don't have to rush it, which it sounds like the the timing is phenomenal on mm -hmm. yeah. resignation to workshop meeting, it couldn't have worked mm -hmm. out better. Um, that we'll we'll do it at the next meeting. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is the PSATS membership. A motion was made at the workshop to add Dan Klein to our PSATS membership and to authorize subscriptions uh, to the PSATS Township News Magazine. So, one, uh, Sue, did you did you get him signed up for that or is that, that still? Is, yeah, um, he's, he's added on and he should be getting the magazine. I don't know if they'll send him this past month or next month, but um, I, I'd imagine they'd probably start with next month. So yeah, Dan, let, let us know if you don't get that for any reason and we'll reach out to PSATs. Yeah. Okay. Next is the QuickBooks virtual class. Uh, the request was made to have Dan and uh, Irene attend a kind of a crash course on QuickBooks. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop to authorize Dan to attend the QuickBooks virtual class uh, beginning in February. Uh, it's a cost of $135, and uh, I believe, Irene, based on your schedule, you'll you'll also be interested in attending uh, another similar class, probably not the one in February, though, based on your work schedule. Peter, if I could mention yeah. what I told you. Yeah, absolutely, in, please. In April, Irene, there's a Sunday workshop at their Hershey Lodge. It's an all-day seminar. And it goes much deeper into the second stage of QuickBooks, which may be something that we're really interested in. I think we lost Irene. Uh, no, I, I still. Oh, no, I was going to say I, it's okay. I was. I was just about to say I see Irene. It looks like she has Mike oh, and so and everything. It's April the 18th, I believe it's a Sunday. Is that, that might be part of the uh, conference. I can't remember when the conference is. No, this one I saw on PSAC when I was looking yesterday. It's an individual class on Yeah, Quick they, they, they run classes. I, I just sometimes I have a class. I don't have that with me. It's okay. We can look at it later. But if if you guys are interested in that of doing kind of the the advanced QuickBooks thing, let's uh, let's get through the, the the basics, the foundation course. And uh, I, I personally don't have any reservations or objections to having you guys go to that because having a stronger knowledge of how the how the bookkeeping program works is is only going to make things better. Yeah, it's it's being conducted by a person that actually works for Intuit, and she left her full-time job to go into this profession of teaching QuickBooks. Okay, very good. Irene, do you have anything that you'd like to say or add to that, or should we move on to the next next item? No, we can move on. I, I never know what my schedule is like that far in advance, so I apologize. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Next is the Saturday holidays. Uh, when we were setting the holiday schedule for 2021, uh, we did not take into account that cr the way Christmas and New Year's Day for 2022 fall, uh, they fall on Saturdays. So uh, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to shift these two uh, holidays to be floating holidays for Sue, because she would normally get to observe them. Uh, and we had actually omitted motioning around having the the standard five vacation days that we give to sue annually uh, we made a motion and approved the both items the two floating holidays and the five vacation days for 2021 which uh, really kind of brings us back to where we should have been compared to uh, 2020 so 
Sorry about that, Sue. It slipped Sorry. my mind, and uh, I didn't didn't realize it at the time when we were looking at the calendar. Yeah, I didn't either. So. <laughs> Next, the pension plan contribution. Uh, we need to contribute to the pension annually, which is a 15% of the gross salary for the secretary. The motion was made at the workshop to authorize a contribution of $4,013.35 for the gross salary of $26,755.68. Next item on the agenda is the Aikens Accounting Audit. Uh, the Treasurer has started gathering information around the 2020 audit. And uh, Irene, I'll turn it over to you if you have any anything additional to add beyond it be beginning. No, things are going smoothly, thanks to uh, Dan and Sue. I actually have a bunch of flash drives I'll be saving uh, all the material to. So this way, if there's any issues with emails, we have a backup and we could just walk it over to the accountant if we need to. Um, Sue, so I'll probably be coming down to the office at some point just to save all the reports that I have. There's some materials on, I think you have on your computer to um, save to the flash drive and then it should be smooth, I, I'm hoping. And I'll um, be available. I know on February 11th, they had asked for a period of time from February 10th through March. I'll give them some dates that I definitely am available and Hopefully it's nothing more than here's a piece of paper and pulling up an additional report on the computer. And so uh, I think it's, it should be going smooth. Very good. I think the, the efforts that uh, you and Dan and Sue have taken to make sure that the, the organization is improved over what was historically there is going to be a, a huge benefit to it going even smoother than it normally does. Next is the letter of credit auto increase for Mervyn and Mabel Weiler. Uh, their letter of credit increased from $37,289.23 to $41,018.15. Uh, this is for the garage that's located at 401 Conrad Weiser Parkway and is a, a nor normal annual auto increase for that line of credit. Or I should say letter of credit, excuse me. Next item on the agenda is the Berks Municipal Partnership Breakfast. This will be held via Zoom on February 5th, 2021 from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Brian Gottschall from Berks DES will give a COVID-19 update and the Berks County Commissioner's remarks will follow. Uh, if you are interested in attending, we do need to send an RSVP back by Friday, January 29th. That's tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Sue. <laughs> Okay, next is the UGI Ahead of Paving Program. Uh, UGI would like us to give them a list of streets, uh, streets that we have scheduled for paving so that they can perform any work before the paving is done. Uh, what I'd like to do is to actually give them the, the list of the full packet of things that we're gonna be doing that we have already planned for 2021. Uh, even though the vast majority of them do not have any UGI or any other infrastructure under them, I figure it's better safe than sorry. Um, then when we earmark any additional road work throughout the year, this year we'll also send it over to UGI just in case there's anything that they need to be aware of. Next item on the agenda is the Marion Fire Company. Uh, they requested a waiver for building permits uh, fees uh, as they're looking to build an office and a meeting room on the engine house. Uh, our, we responded by asking them to reach out to Craft Codes for a waiver of those fees because of the, the fees that are collected by total, a very small percentage of them are actually to the township. Um, most of them are to cover the costs of the services rendered around the inspection and everything else that goes into what craft does. Uh, we have not gotten anything back from uh, the fire department or from craft. Uh, we would need to make a motion uh, whenever it comes up to either grant or deny that, that waiver request. At this point in time, I personally suggest waiting and seeing what actually kind of comes to fruition from that. I know we had uh, at the last meeting and then at the workshop kind of discussed our, our personal feelings on if we should or shouldn't, that it might set a precedent if we do this. But I think at this point, no action is the best course of action on this. Okay, next is the Act 537. Uh, we do have a, a memo packet uh, that we drafted in months prior to be sent to the DEP. Um, we hadn't actually already sent it over simply because it was a, a little bit of a miscommunication between myself and Jim McCarthy. I thought he was gonna send it. 
he thought I was going to send it. So neither of us ended up sending it. So I will be sending that out to Tim Wagner this week. Um, but in other news, Jim McCarthy did have contact with Tim Wagner about un other unrelated things to Marion Township. But we, we did come up in the course of conversation uh, where the DEP was kind of looking for an update. Um, Jim relayed that uh, our on-lot program is starting up soon. We actually just appointed a, a different SEO, Alan Madera from Berks and Virotech as the new SEO. Uh, they actually seemed quite pleased that we had made that change as they hold his work in fairly high regard. And uh, he has a lot of experience in properly and effectively managing on-lot programs like that. Um, we also uh, had relayed across that uh, we are interested in getting in touch, even in spite of the COVID restrictions in some sort of virtual capacity, which they are still very interested in as well. And that uh, that we are still looking to do some modifications to the, the Act 537 plan and... Uh, make some changes around feasibility and affordability. Um, from what Jim relayed to me, they seemed very interested in looking that over and uh, are pleased to hear that we're taking a, a conscious and um, very thoughtful approach to the Act 537 and are looking forward to working with us on helping make progress within the township. Jim, Irene, anything? Thank you. Okay. The last item on the agenda is the Marion Township Community Association car show. Uh, they wanted to do this in May, 2021. Um, we had a little bit of discussion around this on Saturday when, when Don was present. And as much as I would love to do the car show because it was an absolute blast when we did it, the concern is that COVID is gonna be potentially even worse, not better, even if it's the same we would have a, a very difficult time having any any semblance of social distancing or, or proper safety measures to have the kind of turnout that we had the first year that we did it. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like that's not going to be a reality simply because I, I don't want to set you guys down the path of advertising, taking out the, the time and expense to do that, only to find that we, we can't actually do it because it's it would be a, a super spreader event if we were to hold it. Um, Irene, do you want to add anything beyond the, the recap? No, not really. You know, it's just uh, we need more vigilance. <clears throat> it's questionable as to whether or not the state can actually get vaccines. Uh, then it's distribution of vaccines, which is an issue. And um, yes. even though you have the vaccine, it's not 100, excuse me, it's not 100% immunity. So people are going to have this full sense of safety when it comes to the vaccine. And now, I mean, I'm sure everyone's been watching the news. We're getting some uh, other variants of the virus, which may be more uh, easily transmittable, but we still don't know how, if they're any more lethal. And that's another issue. So we need to think about protecting all members of our community, especially the most vulnerable. Thank you. Unrelated to the car show though, but on the, the same track of Marion Township Community Association, um, it is that time of year for grant submissions again. Even though the park is closed, there is nothing functionally stopping us from applying for grants for playground equipment. If the community association is of that mindset, we could still work together to try to get a, a grant request in and uh, try to get the, the uh, wheels turning on that in 2021. Um, Kelly, the offer still stands if uh, the community association would like to use the township Zoom to meet virtually, because I know you guys have not been meeting because of the whole COVID thing. I'd be happy to help you get this set up and get e things emailed out and everything that goes into it in a very similar fashion to what we do with the board meetings. So just give me a call. Let me know. would be happy to help you. Okay. That is the last item on the agenda. Um, let me pull up the police report so that I have that in front of me because that's one of the few additional comments. Is that at the end of packet three, Sue? Because um, I, I didn't two. see it. it should be two. Packet two? Okay. Very so exactly. last, might be the very last one. Fantastic. Okay. It uh, looks like it was a um, relatively standard month for, for the police. Uh, there were 41 security checks. There were actually four traffic accidents in DUI, which is a little higher than normal, uh, but it was pretty standard across the board otherwise. 47 hours worth of patrol, 
Uh, they had six complaints that were, uh, were calls, seven miscellaneous calls for service. Um, really nothing out of the ordinary or critical for attention for the board or for the community. Um, we had at the workshop meeting discuss, discussed a possible uh, grant opportunity around yard waste and uh, mulch that in the past there's been uh, DEP grants that you could use for setting up a program like that, buying equipment, things like a front end loader, uh, actual physical installations of things, uh, fencing, concrete blocks, etc. Um, Sue actually found an article indicating that the DEP was canceling their Section 902 recycling grant, which is what this was under previously for 2021, due to a lack of funding. So uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that would be something that would be viable for us because they're, the, the money from a grant standpoint just simply isn't there anymore. We can keep our eyes out for it in subsequent years, but it, it just doesn't seem like that's going to be a reality. Um, I, have, I have actually had a couple of people reach out to me about, hey, if I have tree limbs or something like that, do we have something like some other municipalities do where I can drop off leaves or grass clippings or branches or sticks? And unfortunately, the answer is, is no. That's something we might want to entertain in the future when it becomes a viable option, but right now, no. Um, I also uh, had somebody reach out about uh, manure hauling through town. Um, if everybody recollects, we usually get uh, a similar concern or complaint annually, oftentimes several times annually, depending on the time of the year. And uh, we, I reached out and talked to Jim McCarthy, and I think Andy, you were on that email as well, uh, that uh, there are some things that we could inquire with. Uh, for example, there, there's not really a restriction or stipulation that says you can't haul manure from one place to another. Uh, the only things that go into it is that the receiving property has to have a manure management plan approved by the BCCD. The hauler has to be licensed. The hauler has to report to D DEP what they haul to and from. Um, otherwise, there's not a limit on what can be moved where in terms of manure. Um, it could even be coming from another state. Um, Dean Druckenmiller uh, did have a, a comment because Jim talked to him that um, if there is a specific complaint, the BCCD can investigate but they would need to know the name of the hauler and the farm that the manure was either coming or going to. Um, and in most cases, it would just be a situation on the above things that I outlined. And if the, the property or the, the farm, I should say, has a manure management plan and that the, the hauler is licensed. The only other thing we could do would be to look to potentially restrict uh, via ordinance a um, uh, certain types of trucks or weight limits for trucks on certain roads, but I, I don't know how much that's that's really gonna gonna net us on that. Um, Jim or Irene, I don't know if you got a chance to read through that that email exchange, but it, it really boils down to there was there were manure trucks early morning going from like the Lebanon side over towards the the Reading side of the township, and uh, received a complaint that uh, there was a, a lot of it coming and going. I had a chance to read it, and I agree with you. There doesn't appear to be much that we can do about it. Yeah, as as long as people are technically following the rules, that it's somebody that's licensed right. and that they, they have a, a plan in place, that is, I think, kind of unfortunately, the nature of living in an agricultural area is there's going to be manure getting moved around, whether it's in a truck or if you happen to be close enough to a field that you can be, be within smelling radius of, of it being applied it's it's unfortunately a fact of life but um, you know and the, the farmers need it though i mean it's it's, yeah, yeah. Are, it's it is food, a, so. it is a necessary evil all right okay i don't have any further comments irene do you have any items for comment yeah, um, and I apologize. This uh, I just got a phone call late afternoon. I know um, we've been trying to revamp a lot of things, uh, getting things moving forward into the future. And Sue's favorite expression is uh, now, that's not the way we do it anymore. <laughs> Used um, to be died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, just looking at some long-term financial planning for the township, um, I had stopped into Fulton Bank the other day and I got the... Um, 
response today. Uh, something that we should be doing on an annual basis, and I'm hoping to make it a habit rather than just an occasional thing, is reviewing our finances annually. And I spoke to the individual at the bank and I said, you know, can we please calendar this so that every year there is a review um, over what we can uh, do with our money as far as investing, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Peter, you put out uh, the account balances as part of the financial reports? Yes. Yeah, they are, they are out on the, the yeah. public directory in the finances. Yeah. So just for everyone's uh, edification, uh, there, are only cer there are certain restrictions as to what a township can do for finances and financial growth uh, as we receive taxpayer dollars. We can't do things that you could do as a personal investor. So we, we, we can't buy GameStop uh, stock. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But um, there are some, some aspects to investing that we can do, and we do have a number of money market accounts. So I just want to make sure that we have been doing all that we can do. So I inquired at the bank, and she assured me that for right now, what we're doing is sound. There isn't any better investment vehicle. I also am reaching out to Pliget, which is uh, another uh, agency that helps uh, uh, municipalities uh, do investment purposes. I didn't receive a return phone call from them yet, but I'm kind of excited to see if they have any other options or any other recommendations. And there's certainly, as long as there's no legal restrictions, there's certainly other options for us to do some long-term planning so that our funds as a township are secure. So just to kind of, again, make it a good habit, just as like Dan and Sue have helped me out like tremendously in getting things organized in the office from a supervisor's perspective, as well as the, the treasurer's perspective, we have to be really prudent, be really organized, and be very diligent to fulfill our fiduciary responsibility to the people of this town when it comes to uh, making sure finances are secure and sound. And so that's my goal over the next couple of years to make sure that we fall into excellent habits over making sure our money is where it should be. Absolutely. Completely wholeheartedly agree. If there's things that we can do that are better vehicles, like I know the money market makes us a little bit of money, yeah. but if there are other things that we can do that is legally sound and gets us better performance and still gives us the, the same level of liquidity that we need, then mm -hmm. I think it's a phenomenal idea. By the way, Wimblesboro uses Plagit. So if you want to get an insider's view, you can call Mickey at, uh, at Wimblesdorf and get her thoughts on that. I think the, sure. the rates with Plagit used to be a lot better than, than they are now. Right. Yeah. yeah but, if you want to get in court and need contact. The liquidity is there. But, right. Yeah. If you, could, if you could either pass along my art, you know, whatever information just so i'd write i'd like to get her uh perspective on it i mean I, I have the phone call out i'm waiting for the representative but they're almost always trying to sell your products but i'd like to know in practice how what the response is right will do thank you thank you both anything additional irene no that was it uh, actually sue i'm surprised um i had john had a complaint and i asked him to send something in through email as um, a public uh, comment. And he was just concerned every time he drives through Stouchburg, he's like, there's people always speeding, like they use it as a racetrack. So I know that was one of his concerns and he was wondering if he could put a flashing stop sign, anything. He just, he's always complaining about that. So this this has been the subject of hot debate several times. So yeah. there, there, are, there are things that we can and cannot do. Um, one of the things, and if you remember back, I think it was shortly after both you and, and Jim were on the board, yeah. I inquired around the line of sight requirements for stop signs because there's there's a whole litany of things that you have to satisfy anymore to put a stop sign in. But based on some of, some of the, the site restrictions that we have, we might be able to put one in on Main Street. I personally think having at least one stop sign on Main Street, I don't know if it's going to be the um, Water Street intersection or the one at Church and Maine, but having a stop sign there um, would help to break things up. Personally, I would like to put it at Church and Maine because of already having the stop signs the other direction. Having a four-way stop there just makes sense to me, but I recognize that they might, that might not legally carry water anymore. Um, that having that, that one break, if you will, might help to stop people from flying off of 422 because it's a real nice straight shot all the way up Main Street, and people tend to just speed. They don't. They don't slow down from 
whatever they were doing on 422. Um, some of the other things that we can do is traffic calming, which is to do things like paint crosswalks, which I had mentioned that at some point we want to do that. Um, cost of paint is next to nothing and we can have the road crew do it and to maybe potentially paint white lines on the outside of the traffic lanes. Visually narrowing the road has a subconscious effect on people that it's the same thing when you drive through a construction zone when they have the barricades up. The roadway is still the same width, but it feels that much smaller. You instinctively slow down. So simple things like that that we can do to, to try to limit that a little bit. Otherwise, I completely agree. We do have a, a problem with speeding. When we had the sign out there, we would have a lot of people driving the speed limit, driving a little slightly over, slightly under, but we would also have people go tearing through it like 80 miles an hour. Yeah. So. And he reported people even passing him. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's a single lane. And he's driving yeah. a very large truck. So so I'm complaining on his behalf. No, and that's it's a very valid concern, and he's not the only one who has lodged that. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a complicated situation. The other thing that compounds that is like, yes, we could even we've told the Tulpahawken police that there is a, a problem there. There isn't anywhere conducive to a speed trap along Main Street. If you think about position, there's not anywhere that they can set up with good line of sight to be able to do the actual speed trapping. So, um, other than us taking like I said, calming efforts on it. There's only so much that can be done. And I, like I said, I'm still interested in the stop sign thing on a personal note. Mm -hmm. We'd have we'd have to look and see what has to be done from a, a legal and engineering standpoint to make sure that that's okay. But I still think that would be beneficial. And I still think the crosswalks and the, the lane boundaries being painted on would have a very beneficial effect on people driving slower because they're, they're going to be more attentive to coloring inside the lines, if you will. Great. Okay. Jim, do you have any comments? I uh, just wanted to say thanks to Irene and Dan for the awesome job they've been doing. And we're back on track financially. We're back on track with knowing where our money's going. They have just done a phenomenal job in the last few months to straighten everything out and I just want to say thank you to both of them for the outstanding job they're doing. Thank you. Yeah, we're actually now using QuickBooks in the way that QuickBooks was supposed to be used. So All right. thank you to both of you. And uh, the the intervention from Rick Rule when, when we ran into problems was ideal. And I know, I think you uh, just saw a light bulb go off for Irene. So I read yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot Rick an email and uh, we'll get our program updated and cleaned up so that we continue to move forward the way we should. Good. Uh, just as a, a addendum to that for, for the record, um, we have a, a couple of long-standing, just old journal entries that we want to have professional and actual CPA make sure that they're settled correctly so that we don't inadvertently uh, cause a problem or do something that's inadvertently uh, not okay. Um, and while he's in there doing that, we want to get QuickBooks because we're a, a version or two behind upgraded to the current version, which is, is good to do now and again to make sure that we're Keep, keeping current on generally uh, acceptable accounting practices. Um, so, Sue, do you have any comments? You forgot Andy. I did. I'm sorry. Okay. I was going. I was going out of order. I inverted the S's. Uh, Andy, do you, do you have any comments? The, the only thing that I have is I need to take a look at the the Joint Planning Commission bylaws, I guess, or at least you know make some inquiries because. Now we should appoint somebody to be on that board. Uh, and I just have to see how, how things are set up. I, I noticed that that was actually the first Joint Planning Commission meeting that I ever attended. Um, and they don't get together often, but it's important that we have a, that we have a seat on that board. I noticed North Heidelberg had one, they have a three member board and they had one representative. And it looked like the other municipalities had two. So I'm just not sure exactly how it's, uh, how that's characterized. Um, so until the next meeting, I'll make some inquiries on that. I don't know what the term is, uh, the term of appointment, but something's going to be done there to get us a, a seat. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually curious yeah. about that point specifically. 
And I didn't know if that was going to be like a right away thing or just like the next time we have a meeting, they say like, you need to send somebody to vote on this. But you know, I think it should be done sooner rather than later. Okay. No, I, I agree. And uh, for what it's worth, uh, we can try and find an interesting, interested party in that. And if not, I'd be willing to, to serve in that capacity. I've, I've been going to them for the past like six months anyway. So um, uh, keep an eye out. Uh, Irene and Jim for anybody that might be interested in a similar fashion to, to what we had for um, our planning commission or the, excuse me, not, the, not planning commission, the zoning hearing board. Um, and we'll go from there. And if not, I'd be willing to step up and, and cover that. The joint planning commission apparently uh, shifts locations, I think every two years. So um, last year and this year, it's Rob Azonia. That's why the meetings were held there and not at Lisa was in charge of handling it and and that's why I made the joke there because I mean she had a lot of work to do and like the last six years before that or whatever nothing happened so <laughs> it was kind of thrown thrown into it just by bad luck I guess uh, but it does move around to each municipality so everybody gets their fair share Okay, we'll have to make Andy, sure that we don't. I've, I've, also, I've also served on a zoning hearing board in the past, so I'd be happy to volunteer as well. Yeah, and it's not the zoning hearing board, it's the, it's the planning commission. Everybody, right. just important to know that everybody still has their own zoning hearing board. So, right. um, I mean, it probably goes without saying, but yeah, we don't, we don't lose the local control. And I, I think everybody realized at the meeting that if, if there is an amendment that applies only in one of the municipalities, the other ones just kind of take a hands off approach. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll do rock paper scissors to to see which one of us, if nobody else steps <laughs> up, Jim, for the uh, the joint planning commission. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Andy? That's it. Okay. Fantastic, Sue. Do you have any comments now? I do not. Okay. Excellent. Seeing no uh, further items on the agenda and no comments, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.11 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Oh.